Stiff calves can cause a variety of problems. Foot pain, knee pain, hip pain, and even lower back pain can be a result of tight calves. Now, stretching your calves is a good start, but if you still have persistent calf stiffness despite doing calf stretches, then you may be making one of the five mistakes in this video. I'll explain why each one is a problem and how to fix it. So let's dive in. The first mistake has to do with shoe wear. Now, what most people think about when they think about shoe wear is improper arch support. And it is important to have good arch support because if you can pronate too much in your shoes, then your body can get around your calf and not have to step straight over top of your foot. And that can result in stiff calves. But there's an even bigger problem with shoe wear that most people don't think about. And that's just that we wear shoes all the time. Now this is particularly a big problem for women who wear higher heel shoes, but even a one inch heel causes you to walk around slightly on your toes. Furthermore, even most athletic shoes have a slight drop from your heel to your toe. And if you're always walking slightly up on your toes like that, then you never get to the full range of ankle dorsiflexion, which can cause calf stiffness. And so the first tip to help relieve calf stiffness is just to switch to lower heel shoes. If you're someone who wears a high heel shoe, switching to a shorter heel or to a flat can help relieve calf stiffness. And even if you're an athlete who wears athletic shoes, switching to a zero drop shoe may be a better option to allow you to get more ankle dorsiflexion as you're going through your daily activities or through your sporting activities. Now that's not to say that you can never wear high heel shoes. You just need to take extra concern to do things to counteract the risk that you've caused by walking around on your toes all day long. And that brings us into the second mistake, which is neglecting your soleus. If you don't know, you actually have two calf muscles. One superficial calf muscle that crosses the knee called your gastrocnemius. And that has two heads, the medial head and the lateral head. But you also have a deeper muscle that lies underneath your gastrocnemius called the soleus. And the soleus muscle is the muscle that you use more in everyday postural functions. The gastrocnemius has a higher proportion of fast twitch muscle fibers, which means it's used for things like pushing off when walking or especially when running or jumping. But the soleus is used more for sustained postural activities, such as standing without falling forwards. And so if you're standing, like this all day long, your soleus is persistently active. But when most people stretch their calves, because the gastrocs are more visible, most people think about stretching their calves with the knee straight. But that limits your ankle flexibility before you get to the end range of the soleus. And so in order to stretch your soleus properly, you need to stretch with your knee bent. And to do that, you can stretch in a stagger stance like this, and you're going to be stretching the front leg. Now you bring your knee out in front of your toe like that and go to the maximum range that you can without allowing your heel to lift up off the floor. And then holding that stretch for about a minute. Now there's a test that you can use to test your soleus flexibility. And to do that, you stand up against a wall with your toes up against the wall, and then try to touch your knee to the wall. Now, if you can get your knee to the wall while keeping your heel flat on the ground, then move back a little bit, and then test again. If you can do that, move back a little bit, and test again. And if your heel comes up off the floor, then move back forward until you find the point where you can touch your knee to the wall without lifting your heel off the ground. So that's the soleus stretch. Now moving on to the third mistake, people also make technique errors when stretching their gastrocnemius. Some of the most common ways of stretching the gastrocnemius are putting the foot up on the wall like that, stretching with your heels hanging off of a step, or doing a runner's stretch like this. 
Now, I think the best way to do this is doing a runner stretch because when you're stretching your calves, if you allow your foot to overpronate, that plays into the problem. And that's hard to control when you're stretching off a step. When you're stretching on the wall like this, you also can't get as much force as you would be able to as if you were bearing weight over top of your foot. Now to stretch your calves correctly, you wanna start out with a dome in your arch like this. So you don't wanna allow your foot to pronate or flatten down when you're stretching your calves. So go into the maximum amount of pronation, maximum amount of supination, and then find a nice middle ground where your knee is over top of your toe and your arch is lifted. Now you're gonna step forward with the opposite leg and you wanna stretch as far as you can, keeping your heel on the ground and keeping the arch lifted. So don't let your heel come up off the ground like that. You also don't wanna allow your foot to flatten down because if you allow your foot to flatten down or your toes to turn out when you're stretching, you can stretch a lot farther into the stretch but you're not stretching your gastrocnemius correctly. You're getting around ankle dorsiflexion through doing pronation. Now the fourth mistake that people make is neglecting the tibialis anterior. The tibialis anterior is a muscle on the front of your shin that opposes your calf muscles. Your calf muscles point your toes downwards into plantar flexion like that. Conversely, your tibialis anterior pulls your foot upwards into dorsiflexion. And if your tibialis anterior is weak, then your calves can overpower it and get stiff. Now to strengthen your tibialis anterior, you do that by putting the weight on your heels and trying to lift your forefoot up off the floor. Now you can combine a calf exercise into this by doing a heel raise that activates your calf muscles and then come back down. And after you've activated the calf muscles, they go through a period of relaxation, a principle known as autogenic inhibition. Then you come immediately up into a toe raise. So you raise your toes up off the floor and that activates your tibialis anterior. It also relaxes the calf muscles by a principle known as reciprocal inhibition. So you go up on your toes, hold that position, for 10 seconds to activate the calf muscles. Then they go through a relaxation due to autogenic inhibition. And then you contract your tibialis anterior, which uses reciprocal inhibition. These muscles inhibit these muscles. And repeat that for a set of five to 10 repetitions, holding each one for 10 seconds. So 10 seconds at the top, and then 10 seconds on your heels, and then 10 seconds on your toes, and then 10 seconds on your heels. Now make sure you're standing by something for safety, either something like a counter that you can hold onto or standing close to a wall because you don't wanna end up falling backwards and fall backwards on your bottom. Now the final mistake that people make is neglecting myofascial work on their calves. And the fascia is like an envelope that surrounds your muscles. And if the fascia is too stiff, then your muscles can't stretch fully. Now there are lots of different ways to help loosen the fascia in your body. You can use a massage stick like this and just roll back and forth along your calves. You can also use a massage gun. But one of my favorite ways to address trigger points in the calves is to do it manually using your hands because that way you can actually feel the stiff areas with your hands as well as get the feedback from your calves. Now, most people have some trigger points on their medial gastrocnemius, the inner head of the gastrocnemius. And you just feel around in the calf until you feel sort of a knotted sore area in there and then hold pressure on that area for a minute and a half to three minutes. So you have to be kind of patient with this. So you put a pressure to the point where you feel like it's a little bit uncomfortable and then back off a little bit and just hold a very gentle pressure on that area. Now you may notice over that minute and a half to three minutes, you can sink in a little bit deeper and a little bit deeper 
as the calf muscle relaxes. So that's how you do it for the gastrocnemius. Now another advantage to this technique is you can get a little bit deeper and you need that for the soleus because when you're using a massage stick like this, it really just addresses more the superficial tissues. But to get down to the soleus, you actually have to kind of get underneath the gastroc muscle. And so to do that, you pin the trigger point in your soleus between your two fingers. So you're behind the leg bone, but kind of in front of the calf a little bit. And then you press in until you find sort of a sore area and trap that trigger point or knot between your fingers. And then again, you hold pressure on that area for about a minute and a half to three minutes until it relaxes. Now, another way that you can address trigger points in your calves, particularly deeper trigger points in your soleus, is seeing a physical therapist that does trigger point dry needling. With dry needling, you put the needle actually inside the muscle, and so you can get even more specific and deactivate the trigger point neurologically. So those were the five mistakes that people make that lead to calf stiffness. Try out each of the solutions and let me know in the comments which one works best for you. Now, if you need more tips for knots in your legs, check out this other video over here. But before you go, if you found this video helpful, make sure to give it a like, and if you haven't already, subscribe to our channel so you can get notified of our future videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.